Hello, I'm Nils. In this video, I'll be talking about NMN and NR as part of an anti-aging regimen, why I started taking them, why I'm still taking them, and also about some recent research that gives some guidance into what might be an ideal dose or perhaps a minimal dose. Nothing in this video is intended as or should be taken as medical advice. NMN is a precursor to NAD or NAD+, a coenzyme that helps with the DNA repair, helping to repair and maintain our cells, and helps with energy production. It's also been found to improve mitochondrial respiration and biogenesis to increase endurance and muscle insulin sensitivity, and to support muscle recovery and strength gains after working out. NMN is closely related to a compound called NR. I actually take both NMN and NR, usually on alternate days, but occasionally I'll take them on the same day. The reason that I started taking them, and still do, is that as we age, our NAD levels decrease. Both NMN and NR, when taken orally, convert into NAD plus and can restore the compound to youthful levels. There's strong evidence that we actually need NMN in that there is a transporter which has been found in the human gut which has evolved specifically to move NMN into our cells. This would only be true, of course, if there was some NMN in food, and there is a small amount. There are tiny amounts in foods such as milk, meat, mushrooms, and avocado, and I do eat all of those foods, but there's not enough NMN in food to increase NAD significantly. In addition to NMN and NR, there are some other forms of vitamin B3 that are also precursors to NAD+. They include niacin, also known as NA or nicotinic acid, and NAM, also known as niacinamide or nicotinamide. NMN, NR, NA, and NAM all increase NAD. But the last two have some potentially problematic side effects. Niacin, for example, does have some health benefits. It can help raise our HDL, the so-called good cholesterol. It can lower triglycerides, but it also increases blood glucose and can sometimes trigger new onset diabetes. Niacinamide has the same problems. And in addition, niacinamide is used medicinally to shut down the sirtuin genes, which is the opposite of what we want if we accept the theory that the sirtuins are anti-aging genes. Niacin can also cause a niacin flesh, which some people find to be really irritating. What I found works best for me in terms of raising NAD is to take either NMN or NR, or sometimes, as I said, I'll take both. There's some history of competition between people promoting those two different supplements, but they actually appear to be very similar in that they both raise NAD along slightly different pathways. Unlike niacin or niacinamide, they do so without raising blood sugar and without causing a flush and without deactivating the sirtuin genes. As I mentioned before, I take NMN some days, NR on other days, and once in a blue moon, I'll just feel like taking them both together. According to a recent study called Long-Term Administration of Nicotinamide Mononucleotide Mitigates Age-Related Physiological Decline in Mice, the dose used in lab animals that showed anti-aging benefits was the equivalent of 8 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in humans. So if you're trying to figure out how much to take, if you know your weight in kilograms, just multiply it by eight to find an ideal or perhaps a minimal dose. 
In my own case, I weigh 180 pounds, which is about 81 kilograms. 81 times 8 equals 648. So that means that I would need at least 648 milligrams per day of NMN. If you usually figure your weight in pounds, just multiply it times 3.6. 180 pounds times 3.6 equals, again, 648 milligrams. And so that, again, would be a minimum for me for NMN. And when I say that it's a minimum, I actually like taking a little bit more. I usually just take about one gram of NMN per day. I've tried different amounts, and I would just say that that amount feels right to me. And also, when I have taken that amount, and I've tested my NAD levels, they come in optimally when I take about a gram a day of NMN, or about 800 milligrams of NR. Now, I also take a supplement called apigenin, which prevents an enzyme called CD38 from breaking down NAD plus in our bodies too quickly. Or sometimes I'll chew on some parsley, which is also high in apigenin. But be aware that if you want to get your apigenin from parsley, you would pretty much need to eat a big salad bowl full of it. So to me, it's usually just easier just to take the supplement. I should also mention that we can also raise NAD plus by fasting or by doing vigorous daily exercise. Though it's hard to quantify how much of an increase occurs when we do those things. So I also do fast, I also do exercise, but I still take NMN and NR, hoping for an optimal increase in my NAD+. This video is sponsored by Do Not Age, a company that both sells supplements and conducts and supports anti-aging research. If you would like a 10% discount on all of the products on their website, use the discount code PATHWAYS being sure to type it in all caps. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.